Hello and welcome. It's Anul Yildiz here from the Computational Geoscience Group at the University of Göttingen. I will be presenting our recent research on the emulation techniques for rapid flow like geohazards. Let's begin with the motivation of this study. Several powerful physics based computational landslide runout models have been developed and validated throughout the last years. The Geohazards community applies forward models in simulation tools to predict potential landslide runout, including the uncertainties, and uses inverse approaches to infer on model parameters for calibration purposes. It is still a challenging task to turn these computational frameworks into robust, transparent, and transferable simulation-based decision support tools for geohazard mitigation. Applications to assess this landscape of uncertainties, such as uncertainty quantification, model selection, calibration, or sensitivity analysis, require a large number of simulations, which forms a computational bottleneck. What we propose to overcome this problem is to exploit the emulation techniques. We do so by starting with idealizing the physical process. We idealize the process of a flow-like rapid mass movement with Wilmy rheology and depth average shallow flow equations. One needs two friction parameters, dry Coulomb friction coefficient and turbulent friction coefficient. We have used a GIS-based and an open-source computational framework in this study. Our AVA flow requires a digital elevation model as input topography data. The other input data can be categorized as material parameters and scenario parameters. While the first one is related to the rheology and flow characteristics, the latter control the case-specific properties of a simulation. A non-oscillatory central differencing numerical scheme with CFL criterion for stability and a minimum flow height of 0.001 meter as threshold forms the numerical solution of our overflow. The main output our overflow generates is a raster file of flow heights in each cell in meters. Alternatively, raster files with flow kinetic energy or pressure are generated. We then post-process the data to be able to calculate metrics such as impact area, runout length, and apparent friction angle. This complete structure forms one simulation, which needs to be repeated numerous times to handle the landscape of uncertainty. We propose to build an emulator with limited number of simulations and to estimate the outcomes of a large number of simulations with the emulator. But what is an emulator? It is a statistically valid representation of the simulator. It helps us to link the outputs of the landslide runout simulations to the input parameters and make predictions with new input combinations. We define the raster file outputs of our overflow as vector outputs and the post-processed metrics as scalar outputs. Robust GASP package implemented in R helps to build the emulator. Let's see how it works. Here is an example of an output Y as a function of X in the figure on the left hand side. Assume that we have a design matrix consisting of 10 randomly selected points of X and the output Y. We will build the emulator using these points. In simplest terms, we need a mean function and a covariance function to build the emulator. And in turn, make predictions using it. We can see the predicted output function with the solid black line in the figure on the left hand side and the original output function with the solid blue line. The gray shaded area shows 95% confidence interval. The figure on the right is a one-to-one -one plot of the output and the prediction. We can build a new emulator using 15 training points and we see that 
the confidence interval becomes narrower around the estimated output functions, and the predicted function and the original output function comes really close together. Increasing the number of training points improves the estimation quality further. We have chosen three case studies to test the potential of emulating the outputs of our overflow. Cases selected are Bondoraxolite in Switzerland, Asheron Rock Avalanche in New Zealand, and Frankslite in Canada. We will write three parameters between simulations. We will write the dry Coulomb friction coefficient between 0.02 and 0.3, the turbulent friction coefficient between 100 and 2200 meters per second square, and the release volume between 50% and 150% of the original release volume. 50 sets of parameters were generated randomly using Latin hypercube sampling to maximize the minimum distance between points. For Bondo, we did not only vary the model or scenario parameters, but we also used different DEM products and changed the model resolution. For example, we see here in the figures on the left-hand side a snapshot from a DEM with 1 meter resolution. Figures in the middle show how the input topography would look like for a model resolution of 5 meters, while figures on the right-hand side show the model resolution of 10 meters. So let's have a look at the results of emulating scalar outputs. We start with impact area of Bondo. Different colors represent varying DEM products in this slide. Box plot on the left shows an increase in impact area with coarser model runs, and the figures on the right hand side illustrate the maximum flow height and how the impact area looks like for a fine and a coarse model resolution. After building the emulator using the input parameter combinations, and outputs from sets of model runs, we validated the emulators with k-fold cross-validation. We start with the validation of impact area of Mondo. We can see that good estimation quality is obtained for all DEM products and model resolutions. The lowest R-square value were higher than 0.96. Emulators built with the finer model runs have higher R-square and lower root mean square error than those built with coarser models. Different DEM products at the same model resolution produce similar estimation performance. Next comes the runout length for simulations of Bondo caves. In the figure on the right hand side, you can see how we calculated the runout length between the center of mass of flow in the first step and the last step of the simulation. No significant effects of DEM or model resolution can be seen in the ranges and the medium values of the runout length obtained from sets of 50 simulations. Similar to the impact area, validation of the emulators built with simulations with varying DEM or model resolutions provided high square values, high R square values, I'm sorry. An overall increase of R square and the decrease of root mean square error can be seen with decreasing model resolution. And here we see a summary of the apparent friction angles from the simulation of Bondo case. We calculated this parameter using the height difference along the path of the runout length shown in the previous slides. A slight reduction in the median apparent friction angle can be seen with increasing model resolution, especially the, for the coarsest ones. Also for the apparent friction angle, very high R-square values were obtained for all model and DEM resolutions. Here we can see the comparison of emulation performance for scalar outputs across cases. DEM and model resolutions were kept at 20 meters. The cross-validation was performed again with K-fold technique. Even though the release volumes, flow mixtures, and the topographies are different, R square values higher than 0.96 were obtained for all cases. 
which means we can use the emulation techniques with confidence to estimate the scalar outputs of runout simulations, meaning one model produce one numeric output, such as impact area or runout length. Figures in this slide present a visual comparison of the validation of emulators built to predict the vector outputs. We again start with Bondo case. For example, maximum flow height is predicted in more than 200,000 cells for an emulator built with model resolution of 5 meters, whereas this number reduces to less than 4,000 cells for model resolution of 50 meters. 20 additional simulations were run for validation, and values in each cell are compared with the confidence interval of the predictions of the same cell. If the simulated value is within the confidence interval of the estimations, it has been considered as a valid prediction. We see that majority of the cells has high validation rates. Box plot herein shows the validations of maximum flow height for bond. Emulators built with simulations of 5 and 10 meter model resolutions have a median validation rate of 90% whereas the rest is around 85%. The coarsest emulator has the lowest median validation rate. If we compare the emulation performance for vectoral outputs from different case studies at the same DEM and model resolution, we see first visually the estimation capacity are quite similar between cases, which is confirmed by the box plot in this slide. The median percentages of validations within 95% of confidence interval is around 85 to 90%. Lastly, we see how much time saving the emulation techniques are by comparing the average time for simulations and the total time of predictions. For example, an average simulation with a model resolution of 5 meters is around 900 hours. But 1,000 predictions in more than 200,000 cells for 5 meter model resolution emulator can be made in around a minute. To conclude, we demonstrated that Gaussian process emulation based on high fidelity simulation results are powerful tools for computationally intensive simulation tasks. In the case of scalar outputs of Bondo case study, which means a model run produces a singular numeric output, emulation quality was still good even for the coarsest computational mesh. And emulation induced error decreased for finer model resolutions. A comparison between cases showed that validation of emulators for scalar outputs produced very high R square values for all cases. In the case of vectoral outputs of Bondo, which means a model run produces a large number of coordinate based outputs, emulation quality was still high and it is less affected by the model or DEM resolution. And lastly, we are still working on expanding our database of case studies to test the potential of emulation techniques. Thank you for tuning in. The link to download these slides is given in the description of this video. If you have any questions, please write in the comment section below. And last but not, less, not least, we would like to point out this is a collaborative effort across multiple research institutes in Europe. If you would like to collaborate with us on the emulation of landslide runout simulations, please send us an email. Thank you.